buddy. How are we today? It's 10.03 on the fan. It's the Tiki and Tierney Show. Boy, it's been an interesting week. It's been an interesting couple of weeks here. If we have uh, take a little spin on the old emotional roller coaster here with our football teams, the ups and the downs, the euphoria, the anger. And here we are. We're a little tapped out emotionally in terms of that <laughs> visceral stuff. So now we begin to inch our way toward the pragmatic part, hopefully, of the conversation. I've got a question for you, Teek. Mm-hmm. I've got a question for you. I don't know how you can answer this. I've got a question, though. The question for you, uh, as both teams need to and look to take big, big steps from competitive to truly viable for a championship, who's got the tougher off season? It's interesting because the Jets are more set to be a team that can play uh, with the best. All they need is a quarterback. The Giants, however, have the right culture and assuming, and I got to make this assumption, assuming that they sign Daniel Jones to whatever the deal is going to be, not too punitive to the cap, but fair enough for him for the job that he's done. Everything that they asked him to do, he's done. We heard Joe Shane say it 16 times. I I mean, I, I know it's, it's homerish, but I honestly believe that Joe Shane has the easier job because the quarterback is more stable. The situation is more stable in New York. It's, again, assuming that they signed Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. Because this this league has cliched, but it's become always about the quarterback. Because if you have a bad one or a mediocre one or one that's just kind of sitting at average or inconsistent up and down week to week, it is really hard to win. And it's really hard for a team to trust that guy to get them wins. But if you have a quarter that you believe in, that you trust, that you know is going to come out every single weekend and give you consistency and make plays both with his arm and with his legs, and as he gets better talent around him, he helps lift those guys. I think the Giants, as crazy as it sounds, because when I look at it on paper, Ooh. I clearly go jet side. Ooh. But when I when Homer. I think that I, I mean I, did, I am a little bit, but. I think that Dan, look what Daniel Jones did this year mm-hmm. with what he had this year. So as long as they get most of the other holes right, again, assuming they signed Daniel Jones, yep. I think that Joe Shane has the easier job of the two teams in New York because the quarterback is is the guy. And you know he's the guy. And everybody believes that he's the guy. And you're not questioning, well, who's taking snaps for us this year? Uh, I, I got to say Joe Shane. I know it's homers, but I got to say Joe Shane has the easier job. But I'm not so sure that Daniel Jones is the guy, which is what complicates this. Now, mm-hmm. when I say the guy, I don't mean is he good enough to be what he was this year. I don't, I don't mean that. That's that's clear. Yeah. I mean to roll into San Francisco next year. And put up three touchdowns. Hell, roll into Philly. Roll into Bob's getting there. Roll into Philly next year. You know, roll in against that Dallas defense. Dallas offense a little shaky with Dak who regressed. But this is a tricky one for me because what the Giants have, you're right, the Jets never have that stability right now at the quarterback spot. But the Giants have a lot more holes. And and then I look at this, and we tried to solve it yesterday, and eventually it's going to resolve itself with Aaron Rodgers or with Jimmy Garoppolo or Derek Carr. Now, listen, I'm on the record. Do whatever the hell it takes to bring Aaron Rodgers here. Do you realize that the Jets now, not one, not two, three straight seasons, three, they have failed to have a quarterback throw 10 touchdowns or more. <laughs> 10! <laughs> not 30. 10, right? The last time a Jets quarterback threw for 4,000 yards was 1967. None of us were alive. That's any any part of the show. Wait, is that? No, fa- Dove was here today. He, fa- would, he would have remembered. 1967? Joe Namath. Last time 4,000. Nobody's thrown four. That's <laughs> wow. it. And by the way, this is pitiful. The Jets have the lowest QBR, the fewest touchdown passes, and a completion percentage of 57% since 2009. So I I throw all this not to like, you know, oh, the the, the, the Jets. That's shocking. Well, (laughs) is it though? It's it's not really when when when, you've lived it. No, no, no. When I think about the names, it obviously makes sense. But when I think about... The ineptitude? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got you. That's almost hard to do. (laughs) Like if, if they sat around and said, all right, guys, listen. 
We're going to play bizarro football. Our intention this year is to be uh, as inept as we can possibly be at the quarterback position. And they tried to craft that plan since 2009 and even really before. But that's the stat that I referenced. This would be hard to do if they tried. So it's funny because yesterday, uh, you know, we're all espousing different thoughts about Rodgers and what should you give up and how much of a possibility is it with the Hackett with, with the Hackett move and what would the Jets have to give up and if not that Garoppolo there are all the conversations we've had we make it seem so easy mm-hmm. but we've had these conversations about the Jets before with seemingly uh other viable options on the table that since 2009 never came to fruition but then you get to the Giants and you're like okay this is a playoff team uh, they've got the culture, they've got the coach, they've got the gym, apparently, and they were a playoff team, but there's holes everywhere, and they're miles from being a title and team. And there's a lot of free agents. I, yeah, and they're, yeah, true. A lot of their own guys. If you ask me, I'll ask myself that I asked you the question about. <laughs> I think it is... <laughs> allow me to introduce myself. Um... I think the answer is unequivocally the Jets have the easier job. The Jets have the easier job because there's fewer things well, to do, yeah. but it's the biggest mountain to scale. Okay. Get the quarterback. So 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 you you're kind of taking why I believe the Jets have a harder climb than the Giants. To go get I don't know, depth at guard, at offensive guard. You can do that. There's a lot of good players in the You can do that. To go get a running back who is dynamic and can make plays out of the backfield but also could be a runner between the tackles, you can do that. Hell, you can draft that if you if you if you your scouting department is acute and aware and aware enough. To go get wide receivers, there are plenty of them that are going to likely be free agents or want to be tr- uh, traded because they're not going to get paid. We talked about this with T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd and uh, wh- whoever else there's, is out there, these guys that could be on the move. Uh, the draft is going to have at least six or seven of them. So you're, you're right. The Giants have a lot of holes, but those holes are easily fillable. And the quarterback one, again, assuming that Daniel Jones gets the deal done, you have to keep saying that because he's sure. a free agent. Yeah. Uh, you get the deal done with Daniel Jones. The hardest one is solved for the Giants. Whereas the Jets, yeah, they got all the whole thing. pro bowlers here, all pros at secondary, offensive line should be a little bit better. To get your quarterback is not easy. I mean, hell, we had Ian Rappaport on yesterday, and he's talking about you know the Aaron Rodgers situation. We're we're like we're we're to the moon. Like oh, he's coming. This is happening. Yeah, this is definitely. Yeah. He's like, hey, slow down. Yeah. Uh, don't assume just because you got Nathaniel Hackett that Aaron Rodgers is coming. Hell, Aaron Rodgers might retire. Aaron Rodgers might stay with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. So like, the, he's he, not retiring. But I, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah, he's bringing some you, journalistic responsibility you, to the conversation. You, you, we're going nuts. You gave the perfect reason why he's not retiring. A hundred and fifty million dollars. Correct. There's no chance no Aaron Rodgers is sitting down when Tom Brady is forty six years old and he's still playing. Aaron uh, Rodgers is only thirty nine uh, only. But you know what I mean. But getting him is hard. I know it is. Right. Getting even if it was Jimmy Garoppolo, it's it's hard because yeah. there's other options for all of these guys. So yes, you're right. It is a player. But that one step is probably the hardest of all of them. Whereas the Giants have a lot of them they got to make. There's, 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 there's Plan Bs, right? There's Plan B for Giants want to go get a wide receiver from in free agency or or trade for a guy. It doesn't work out. All right, we got a Plan B. We'll draft whoever from yes. X Y Z University. And, and all of their issues have Plan Bs. The the Jets Plan B is not as clear. If if you don't get Aaron or Jimmy Garoppolo or whoever or Derek Carr, whoever you, you determine is the best guy for the team. All right. 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney are the fan inside of our Town Fair Tire Studio. Friends of Town Fair remind you that you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. If anything, we are resilient here. So we've already plotted this out. We're already, we're already on to, you know, Jay-Z says on to the next one. We're on to the next one. Let's go. Keep it moving, Barber. Keep it moving. All right, let's get to the calls here. First up, we've got Anthony in Harlem on the fan. What's going on, Ant? How are you today? What's up, Anthony? Good morning, boys. So I, I think the answer to this question is um, the Jets have the easier path. Mm. And, and here's why. Why? Because it's not hard. It's easy. Joe Douglas, do you think you care about 
in salary cap hell in four years. No, and gave up to no. To but you versus. can't talk. You can't talk to Aaron Rodgers right now. By the way, this has all got to happen in like oh, the ether. You, oh, you can't talk to him. Right? You're not allowed to talk to him. Right? You're not allowed to talk to him. Say you're fully guaranteed 150 million. And I mean, to me, it's, to me, it's a no-brainer. You make this happen, and and the money. You guys just hit on it, right? The money is the key. I wouldn't talk to his agent and say. We'll give you another year and fully guarantee 180 million. Come play with the Jets. Yeah, but right? that's got to go through the Packers because you can't talk to Aaron Rodgers directly. That's tampering. Now tampering happens all the time. I read an article yeah, this not, morning. Not worried about that. Uh, I read an article this morning about how bad tampering has gotten, like to the point where executives and in, in organizations are talking about this. Like, oh, we want this guy. He's under contract somewhere else. But they talk about it, and they don't even care. Mm-hmm. And the NFL has has gotten really lax with it. And uh, it could be an issue. Well, I'll tell you what, to the point uh, that Anthony just made, um, there is a point where you got to, pl- you know, you, you got to say, deal me, and I'm, I'm playing for the duration of the game here. You, you can't just keep saying, oh, I'll pass, I'll pass. Leon Rose eventually got to do something with these first-round picks. Mm-hmm. Joe Douglas eventually got to win. Uh, so there is an element of now, – now, the pressure – because Joe's done so many good things in terms of other players, but has yet to win and has yet to get the quarterback, it depends how you really process that pressure. But they, they, you got to start winning eventually. Yep. So when you talk about balancing the books and salary caps and first round equity and draft stuff three, four years down the road, does it really apply to, to Joe Douglas right now? Mm-mm. It shouldn't. No. And he's I got, think he knows that. He's got an immediacy. He's got to know that's that. That's much more important than. Ah, oh, where are we going to be in five years? Mm-hmm. One, without a doubt. No doubt, Teague. 877-337-6666. Boy, I'll tell you, Julius Randle was awesome last night. It's probably why you trade him now. We'll get to that a little later. And uh, obviously, mostly football championship Sunday. Teague and Tierney right here on The Fan. 